The Girl in the Dark is a foster care memoir from Angela Hart. This was originally released in 2019. I think that's probably the time when I first read it and I've just finished rereading it. And just as a point of interest, I've been rereading all of the foster care memoirs with the purpose of reviewing them and rediscovering them. And this is the very last one I have to read. So that means I've reviewed everything from Kathy Glass, Casey Watson, Rosie Lewis, Maggie Hartley, and of course, Angela Hart. And unfortunately, we're not ending on the strongest note. There were times when The Girl in the Dark was interesting. And I should point out, I couldn't remember what happened in this book. I had no recollection of the direction it took or how it ended. So I found it to be really intriguing and I thought it could have been really beneficial to read and maybe discover some, well, not for me personally, but if you're in a situation with a, a young child or teenager who's behaving in a similar way, I was hoping there would be some tips that a person could action to try and improve that situation. But there is none of that. And unfortunately, while it's well-written grammatically, and there are times when it felt a little suspenseful. Basically, nothing happens. It's the exact same thing repeated in several you know, similar but slightly different ways. And apart from the epilogue providing some food for thought, it kind of felt a little pointless. Angela and Jonathan are, are fostering a 12-year-old girl called Melissa. And they have a lot of positive things to say about her. They say she's sweet. And yes, it's great to look at the positive qualities in the child you're fostering. But I feel like Melissa very easily pulled the wool over their eyes because she is, well, she's a runaway. She runs away all of the time and she's away for days and even weeks at a time. But there's nothing about her that I think is sweet. To begin with, yes. I thought she was sweet in some situations, but had this problem with being compelled to run away. But actually, the more it went on, I realized she was just deceitful, an expert liar. And for somebody who thought she was very grown up and mature, having boyfriends who were older teenagers who could drive, she acted very immaturely, very selfishly. There wasn't really anything likable about her. And... I thought, okay, maybe she'll have some redeeming qualities as the, as the story goes on, as the situation improves. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. So I'll explain now that in more detail with a spoiler warning. So I actually you know, give some evidence for what I'm saying as a problem with the book. So there will be spoilers from now. Honestly, I don't recommend it because it's really frustrating. And as I said, the epilogue maybe provides some food for thought, but I also don't agree with what the epilogue says. But I'll discuss all of that now. So big, I guess, big spoilers from now. The reason nothing happens is that over the course of the book, Melissa runs away. She is found by the police. She's brought back and repeat. And I think this happens maybe four or five times. I didn't count it, but it's a, it's a decent amount of time and nothing ever changes. And I'm not saying that Angela and Jonathan didn't do anything about it. In theory, there's nothing they can do, and that's part of the problem. And I guess credit where it's due, the book was helping to highlight the fact that as foster carers, their hands were tied. They're not allowed to lock the doors properly. Well, they can lock the doors, but they can't lock the child in by hiding the keys or anything because it's a, it's a safety issue, of course. They couldn't really sanction her the way they would with their own children if they had children because social services put those restrictions in place. And that is frustrating, and that must be so difficult to deal with, knowing that other than just talking to Melissa, there's not really anything you could do. And hopefully, I you know things are maybe different now. This was, was quite a few decades ago when this was set. I'd like to think things are you know better now, or there's more support in place. But certainly at the time, that definitely didn't seem to be the case. But Melissa runs away. She comes back. Angela talks to her, it seems like something's getting through to her, and then repeat. And I, I hated her. I really did not like her as a character. There's nothing nice about her, and I don't see the good in her because she's just selfish and inconsiderate. And she's 12. 12 year olds know that you don't run away and spend time night after night out with older boys. For somebody who thinks she's so mature and grown up, she's very, very juvenile. And it, I found it hard to kind of emotionally follow the story because I was just getting more and more frustrated and had things improved had she showed any indication that she was willing or even able to change that would have been a completely different story the other problem is that it ends so abruptly that I felt like 
chapters were missing. Basically, she goes missing for two weeks, the placement breaks down, and then she goes to live with uh, her aunt and uncle, who live quite far away, so it does seem like it's a, a clean break, a fresh start, but it's a case of one day she's missing, two weeks later she's found, then we cut to the epilogue, and that's it. And it's just not a pleasant way to end the book. It's It showed that there was no improvement for Melissa, there was no advice in the book, there was nothing helpful. Anybody reading it going through a similar situation would have gained nothing from it. As a reader, I gained nothing from it except frustration. As I said, the epilogue did provide some food for thought. It kind of briefly suggested that Melissa could be a victim of the beginnings of grooming, but I don't agree with that. That's not to say she definitely wasn't being groomed, but based purely on what's presented in the book, there's not really enough information to say that that is what was going on. Just because you hang around with somebody who's older, it doesn't necessarily mean that grooming is taking place. Absolutely could be, but I think it's a strong claim to make without any other evidence other than just she kept hanging around with older boys and making bad decisions. So I guess the good thing about the epilogue is that if anybody reads it and recognises the description of grooming there and can see those signs in somebody close to them and then help them get help, that would be brilliant. But in order to get to that point, you do have to read a very frustrating book. So I don't love it. it it's not a great ending. Food for thought, yes, I don't 100% think that that's exactly what was going on, but it could be. I'm not saying it isn't. Either way, The Girl in the Dark is not a great book and unfortunately, I don't recommend it. <laughs> 